Good morning! Welcome back to my channel. My name's Sally and today I'm going to be doing a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time. It's a subject very close to my heart. It's how to get your kids to eat better. We all have fussy kids and mine are no exception. Whether they don't like vegetables, they don't want to eat protein, they like something one day, they don't like it the next day. It can be a real challenge trying to get kids to eat. So I thought about making a video with 10 top tips to get your kids to eat better, but I just found that I had too many and I wanted to share them all. So here we go with 25 top tips to help your kids eat better. Tip one is start as early as you can. Even before you get pregnant, start increasing your nutrition, increasing your probiotics, trying to improve your microbiome. Your baby gets its microbiome from you, from the birth canal when it's born. So your baby's microbiome is only as good as yours. Start eating fermented foods like sauerkraut, um, milk kefir, you can buy these things in the supermarkets these days quite easily. Um, kombucha is just the tastiest drink, I absolutely love it. You can also take a tablet, just look into it. Some of the probiotic tablets out there are not that great quality, so try and research, find a good one. Um, I often use like a powder, um, which is basically what's in the capsules anyway, and then you just sprinkle the powder onto your food, or you can put it in some water whatever. So I'll put the link to the one I use in the description. I would try and eat organic as much as you can. They found over 200 chemicals in newborn umbilical cord blood. So the less toxins you have in your environment, the better, you know, switch to natural cleaning sprays. Just really there's, there's natural alternatives for absolutely everything. It took me a long time to go from my old toxic lifestyle to my new healthy lifestyle. Um, it was a bit by bit process and anything you can do will help. So that can be something you can research. Make sure to eat a variety of nutrient dense foods. Um, as they say, eat the rainbow, so just lots of different coloured vegetables, um, healthy fats and meats, um, beans, lentils, whatever you enjoy and whatever's healthy. Eat as much of a real food diet as you can and you should be getting those vitamins. You can always give yourself a boost with something like a greens powder. And in fact, the news S Good Green stuff actually has probiotics in it. So if you had a scoop of that every day, you'd be pretty much sorted. I'll leave the link to that in the description because I also have a 15% off code for that. You're welcome. And then obviously once they're born, raise them on a real food diet. I highly, highly recommend the Nourishing Traditions book by Sally Fallon. Um, it's based on the Western A. Price principles, um, which is a wonderful way to start weaning your child. My first son had fructose malabsorption and I don't know for sure but I suspect it could have been because I fed him fruit too early. He was a very hungry baby, he had fruit from like four or five months and he still to this day does not tolerate fruit well. I'm not going to go into it on this video because you can read it in the book but having the wrong foods too early can cross over into your bloodstream and cause allergies and things like that. So following the Western A. Price weaning plan I would say is awesome. I've just remembered it's the Nourishing Traditions Baby and Child Care book that you want um, for the weaning. Not the standard nourishing traditions book although that one is excellent too okay so now we've got all the early year stuff out of the way we can get on to tip two if you're going out take healthy food with you you can either take some packaged healthy snacks you can pack a lunch box with some crudités maybe some meat some boiled eggs some fish some cheese whatever you want to take um, so you've got a little selection of, of things there even if it's crackers whatever you don't want to be stuck out with children who are absolutely starving and you end up going into the nearest place and having to just eat whatever they serve I've been out so many times to uh, zoos and things and the menu there is just horrible it's not stuff I would want to eat even as a treat and it's like a tenner for a burger or something you know the prices are horrendous nothing's nutritious you don't even enjoy it you wish you'd have packed some healthy food that cost like a quid in your bag because I'm usually quite busy I usually just pack um, some healthy snacks in the bag and that keeps us going until we get back home unless we're going out all day then either I will bring some lunch or pick something healthy from the menu that I know is going to be okay tip number three give them only healthy snacks. So a lot of kids just like to graze. They don't really like being faced with a big meal. It just feels like a big mountain to climb, especially when my daughter was quite young in her kind of toddler age. I would give her lots of little bits of food throughout the day that she could pick at and it was helping her with her dexterity and her exploration of different foods. And it gives her some power. We have power over kids a lot. If we can give them the power ever, then that's always a good thing. So I would try various healthy foods throughout the day, put them in a little bowl, give them to her and let her try them. If we're having packaged snacks, sometimes we do have just the standard kind of naughty treats, but most of the time I have 
you know, a cupboard full of healthy snacks and I pull them out, uh, let the kids choose. They get all excited, looking through, trying to find their favourites and discovering new exciting treats. And you know that if you're giving them a healthy snack, they're getting what they need. So what I mean by healthy snacks is real food and pronounceable ingredients. So it can either be something you've created in your own kitchen, something you've taken out of a packet that is a whole product like a cheese or a vegetable or a meat, or it can be, as I say, packaged healthy snacks and you look at the ingredients on the back. You know, this has cashew use dates, currants, cacao powder, cacao nibs, cacao butter. This has peas, rapeseed oil, salt. This is sweet potato, sea salt, palm oil. So try to find foods that don't have additives, they don't have nasty vegetable oils in, they don't have a high amount of refined sugar, and they actually contain nutrients. Tip number four, model good eating by eating a mostly real food diet yourself. If most of what you're serving up is healthy, that's what the kids are exposed to. Obviously, the odd night of having chicken nuggets and chips is fine, we do it. It's good for your psychological well-being to feel like you're part of bigger society, um, and the kids just enjoy it. I don't think it does much harm because most of our diet is good. And it doesn't make it a big thing like, oh, we're eating junk food and oh, we're eating healthy food because we just eat what we eat and that's just how I cook and what I serve. So it doesn't become a big issue. That's just our diet. Tip five, talk positively about the food you eat. If we talk positively and enthuse about the food that we're eating and how delicious it is, it's gonna rub off on them because everyone loves positivity and it has a kind of subliminal effect on us that we feel happier and more into something if it's positive. Tip number six, cook healthy recipes with them. My children love to help out in the kitchen and it really helps them eat if they've contributed to the meal. My son's got a little safety knife from Lakeland and he loves chopping up veg. He can really get stuck into it with his chopping and he loves it. He also absolutely loves using the spiralizer. Um, I wouldn't let my daughter use this because she's still only two, but with my son, I monitor him because it is very sharp. He just turns the handle for me and watches it all come out the bottom. Um, and then he loves to eat it because he's contributed. He makes salads sometimes, they're absolutely huge. You know, everything's chopped really, really big, but we all say, Mmm, it's delicious. And he feels really proud of himself. My daughter loves cooking cakes and mixing and getting her hands all in the flour and stuff. And I love the fact that my children have grown up baking with only healthy ingredients. You know, they just get used to using coconut sugar and spelt flour or coconut flour or almond flour or all the other healthy ingredients we use. And that's just a normal part of their life. So when they grow up, they'll have these skills to take into adulthood. Tip number seven, only offer healthy options, but offer a selection. So say at dinner time, offer a variety of different foods that they can eat. So if they don't like the three items that you were planning on putting on their plate, they've got all these other things they can eat. I will pretty much every dinner time have a bowl of crudités because I know my son will just eat the entire bowl. He can munch on raw vegetables all day long. Um, cucumbers, carrots, peppers, anything I put in there. With my daughter, she's a little bit less fussy now, but I used to put out things like olives and avocado because I knew that she would always eat those things. So if she didn't like what we were having for dinner, I knew she was gonna get some good nutrition from that. If the only options at dinner are healthy, but there are quite a few options, they're going to eat something healthy for dinner. Tip number eight, understand that some kids, especially those with learning difficulties or anxiety, may find it difficult to sit still at the dinner table. So allow them to get up and down if they need to. Don't force them to sit in their seat. That just creates a stressful dinner environment and takes away yet more of their power, which they will try and get back somewhere else and would just make trying to get them to eat a million times harder. You could give them a fidget toy while they eat. This has really helped my son. And also in one of our sensory play boxes, we had a chair band. So my son knows that's always his seat. He sits there and he can play with it with his feet while he's eating. That has really, really helped him sitting still and eating his dinner. Tip number nine, along the same lines, some kids just find tastes and textures really freaky. So try and be understanding of that and also to figure out your specific child and what things kind of freak them out. You could maybe put a little bit of the thing that freaks them out on the plate with other stuff. So if they don't like mushy food, you could put a tiny bit of mushy food with lots of crunchy food and then they can have a little taste and eventually it just gets them used to it. Um, and also they don't have that fear of having to eat so much of it. If they know it's only a tiny bit, it's just introducing it gradually. We're all different and us adults have weird things as well about us. It just seems with kids, it makes life difficult. So we just want them to be happy with what we've cooked. But they're people at the end of the day with feelings and likes and dislikes. So be an understanding of exactly why they don't want to eat, asking them, talking about it with them and being compassionate and empathic should really help that area too. Tip number 10, get creative. My kids are really funny with jacket potatoes, but if you scoop out all the mash, mash it up with some butter and put it back in, they love to scoop out the mash and eat it like that. 
pretty much exactly the same thing, I've just mashed it. So again, figuring out what your child likes and what works for them. My daughter, she now eats veg because I took a really relaxed approach to it, but she was really, really fussy in the past with it. And so what I would do is chop up veg really, really small and have it in like a tuna mayo and she would eat it then. So it's just thinking outside the box, putting some veg in your smoothie, putting veg into baking. It's all gradually getting their taste buds used to it and getting the nutrition into them at the same time. Tip number 11, find healthy snacks that are exciting and don't make the child feel like they're missing out. You can kind of control the foods your child's exposed to, to some element when they're under five, but as soon as they go to school, it all goes out the window. I know several children at my son's school had never experienced Haribo until they started school and started coming home with Haribo for birthdays and things. Don't agree with that policy, but that's the way it is. So instead of just giving in and having all these unhealthy snacks, I tried to find alternatives and I was blown away with the amount of healthy snacks that are out there that are also exciting and fun and delicious. We have a big selection here and my kids absolutely love them and they don't feel like they're missing out. My son recently took in his naked cola raisins into school and everybody went mad for them. All the children wanted them, you know, because Coke becomes a big thing when they're young, but obviously caffeine, high amounts of sugar, not good for little kids. Um, so the cola raisins were a healthy way to make them feel excited. There are so many different healthy snack brands, so many different flavours within those brands, um, and there's more coming on the market every single day. If you haven't seen already, I'm actually in the process of launching my own healthy snack box business, and it's gonna be aimed at families. So there'll be exciting, nutritious snacks for the children. There'll be carefully selected snacks for the parents. So nutritious snacks that are also energy boosting, hormone balancing, macro balancing, high protein, lower carb, healthy fats, all the things us parents need to keep us going too. One thing that's really bugged me since I've become a parent is you go to kids parties or um, an activity, you know, like um, you might go on a ghost hunt for Halloween or something, and there's always snacks and treats for the kids and there's never anything for the adults and I just think, We've stood there in the cold, we're hungry, we're, you know, essentially working because we're out with our kids making sure they don't, you know, impale themselves. And yet there's nothing for me, there's no cookie for me. So I wanted to include parents in this box because, you know, we matter too. The box is called Treat Trunk and I'll put the link in the description box. Please come on over, give me some love on social media. Come and sign up, give it a try. You only have to try one month and then you can cancel your subscription if you don't like it. I would love to hear your feedback before I launch. The first box will be December. So head on over to treattrunk.co.uk to sign up now. Anyway, enough of the sales spiel. Tip number 12, let them have some control. Like I was saying earlier, kids rarely get control in their lives. It must be so frustrating. So let them choose what we have for dinner one night. Let them get involved. Let them just have beans on toast one night if they want. You know, giving them control and some power in the area is gonna help them to feel more secure at dinner times and also they'll be more willing to eat your choice of meal if you've given them the choice on other nights. Number 13, play silly games with them. Now I know a lot of people don't agree with this, they think it's controlling and manipulative, but my kids absolutely love it. Strangely, my kids' favorite game to play is to eat characters from like TV shows that they like, um, eat the vehicles in them. It's very strange, you say, oh, here's Ryder from Paw Patrol, and they eat it with absolute glee, and you say, oh, I can't believe you just ate Ryder and they think it's hilarious. So they love playing that game. They ask me to play it all the time. Sometimes when they're sat there like, oh, I don't want to eat. Often because they just can't be bothered to use their knife and fork. They're tired. My son especially, he's got home from school. His fine motor skills aren't great, so he struggles with his knife and fork. But if you start playing silly games, suddenly it becomes a happy experience and they want to eat. Um, my son's favourite game at the moment actually is that I will put a piece of his food on my fork, pretend that I'm going to eat it and then look away Oh, my video just stopped recording while I was filming. I need a new camera. Please subscribe to my channel so I can afford to buy a new camera. So, as I was saying, is to get a bit of his food on my fork and then hold it and say, oh, I can't wait to eat this. And then he will eat the food while I'm looking away. And then when I look back, I say, oh, did you eat my food? I mean, he's nearly seven. He still loves this game and he's always begging me to play it. Also, it's a bonding experience. Any time where you're happy and laughing with your children is a good thing. They're gonna behave better in general if they're happy and you've got a closer bond. And laughing stimulates all kinds of good hormones and stuff as well. Tip number 14 is to mix a little bit of a food your child doesn't like into other food they do like. This works really well for kind of purees. It worked really well for my son when he was little. So if he didn't like a food, I would just put a tiny bit of that and mix it into his other food and then gradually up the ratio until he was having a good amount of the other food that he would be able to eat it by itself and not object. 
for older kids you can do things like add a little bit of the food into say a pasta sauce or into mash or just into other foods that they're eating. A lot of the time when I'm playing the game with my daughter and I'm feeding her I will put a bite of something I know she likes and a bite of something she's not so into, just a smaller bite and then feed that to her and then say oh you ate a green bean and you liked it and gradually as her taste buds get used to it she will want to eat those foods. Tip number 15, either don't do pudding or only do healthy puddings. We, as a rule, don't do puddings because I think it's a bad habit to get into. I think most adults can agree that you eat your dinner, you're actually quite full, but then you have this craving for something sweet afterwards. We've been so used to having puddings, we've been so trained to having that sweet treat after dinner, and it's just excess calories that we don't need. You also end up in a fight with your child about, oh, have I eaten enough for pudding? You know, because that's the whole goal, whereas you're trying to teach them to actually just enjoy the meal and that's their food. We do do healthy pudding sometimes if they've eaten enough of their meal, they've done really well, you know, as a sort of special occasion, we will sometimes have pudding, but it will be a healthy pudding. But often they will just have a little something before bed. So they'll have their dinner and they'll have like an hour or two break and then they'll have some fruit or cereal or something like that before bed. Tip number 16, this works especially well for young kids like toddlers, don't let them drink too much, too close to meal time. If they glug back a big drink that's going to fill their tummy and when they go to eat they're going to feel full. So getting them to eat is going to be a struggle and then in half an hour an hour they're going to be hungry and wanting food. Um, I guess that's fine if you've kept the food aside you can just give it back to them but it's probably not going to be hot anymore. Probably best to leave the fluid until after the meal if you can help it. Tip number 17, probably a no-brainer, but I'm gonna say it anyway, no TV during mealtime. You kind of wanna get them into mindful eating where they're eating and focusing on what they're actually doing. If they're watching TV while they're eating, they're not really focusing on it. They're not aware of the tastes that are going in, so it's probably gonna take longer for their taste buds to adjust to these foods. It's harder for them to identify their hunger signals as well, and I think it's just a bad habit to get into. Tip number 18, invite friends for dinner. Especially for school-aged children, this works really well. If they have friends over that eat well, or even friends that don't, it can really positively affect their own eating. If a friend likes a food that they don't, they will often suddenly start to like that food because this kid does or that kid does. And if the kid's really fussy, it makes your child feel great about eating their meal. Tip number 19 is to look at their food intake over a week rather than over 24 hours or one meal. Um, so rather than stressing, trying to get them to eat everything you want them to eat in one meal, um, look at how much they had over that week. On Tuesday, did they have five meals and did they eat an absolute mountain? And then maybe tomorrow, are they going to do the same? We know ourselves, if we've had a huge breakfast and a huge lunch, we'll probably end up just skipping dinner. So again, letting them tap into their own hunger cues is a really good skill, which can set them up for good habits later on in life. Tip number 20, again, let them listen to their hunger cues and don't force them to finish meals. If they're saying they're not hungry, that's fine. They they can leave their food, go do what they're doing, and if they want to eat later, you can bring their dinner back out or give them another healthy alternative. But I think it's very important that they stay aware of their own body and their own hunger cues. Forcing them to eat when they're not hungry causes them to mistrust their own beliefs and ignore their body signals. And the best thing we can teach our children in relation to food is to listen to their body. Tip number 21, be firm and clear about what you expect at mealtimes. The best and most helpful piece of advice I've ever come across was from Janet Lansbury. It works so well and I tell everybody because it's such a golden piece of advice. During mealtimes, if they start messing about and they're not eating, you say, messing about means you're done. Are you telling me you're done? If they're telling you they're done because they've listened to their hunger cues, then that's fine. Again, take them away and then bring their food back out later if they're hungry or give them a healthy alternative. A lot of the time they will say, oh no, 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 I'm not done. And they will stop messing about and continue with their food. If they get used to you taking it away when they repeatedly mess about, they'll stop. Setting down the rules that you have for dinner time isn't a bad thing. It just shows them what you expect and how to be respectful at the dinner table. Tip number 22, don't use food as a reward. Again, like eating puddings, a lot of us adults have this association with sugar and reward. We have something to celebrate, eat sugar. We're sad, we eat sugar. And giving children chocolate and sweet treats when they've done something good creates really bad associations. We want our children to find healthy ways to celebrate, healthy ways to find solutions to problems, and sugar is not one of them. Tip number 23, we're nearly there now. Top up your children's diet with protein powder and greens powder. I have a couple of videos where I make treats for my kids and I include the greens powder and the protein powder. My favorite go-to is the chocolate milkshake. It's banana, cocoa powder, dates, almond milk, and then you chuck in some spinach, some greens powder, some protein powder, and that is a really healthy meal by itself. Maybe when your kid gets back from school or is just a mid-morning snack or a mid-afternoon snack, giving them that can be a huge weight off your mind and make mealtime so much more relaxing. If you know that they've already had a good dose of protein, a good dose of nutrients, you don't have to be getting at them throughout the whole dinner. You can just let them listen to their body and eat as they see fit, knowing that that bit's taken care of. 
Tip 24, let them get playful with their food. If they want to make a face out of their food or they want to line all the peas up, whatever it is they want to do that helps them connect with their food a little bit more, it can be a really fun, exciting way to get them into their food. If they're just messing about, you can revert to Janet Lansbury's technique of saying, if you're messing about, that tells me you're done. Um, but if you don't mind and they don't mind, then just getting creative with their food can be a really good thing and maybe bring out a little bit of an artist in them. Here we are, tip number 25! <coughs> Chill out. The best way to help kids eat is by being calm and creating a relaxing dinner environment. I can't tell you what a difference being relaxed at mealtimes makes. We made a few adjustments in our house like taking care of ourselves before dinner time so that we're more relaxed, getting candles on, whether they be battery powered or real, setting some soft music, being playful and laughing with them, talking to them about their day and helping them resolve any issues they may have had that day at school or nursery before dinner time so that you can all be fully relaxed when you eat and not getting at them, not stressing at them, eat Eat, eat, eat. Having relaxed parents at mealtime just makes the hugest amount of difference. A lot of eating problems for children are psychological and I don't think we even realise we're doing it. Parents have this innate need to get their children to eat and I feel it so strongly. I'm like, just eat! But inside. <laughs> Okay, so this might be really anticlimactic, but I forgot to include one of my favourite tips. So here's bonus tip 26. Growing your own food and getting your kids involved. Kids absolutely love growing food from the start to the finish. The watering, the feeding, the nurturing, the watching it grow, then the cutting it. We grew lots of vegetables when my son was little and he ate so much more of the ones that we were growing. He loved smelling them, touching them, eating them, as he had such a greater connection to his food. I would highly, highly recommend growing food with your children, even if it's just one pot to start. And it's a great bonding experience too. I really hope these tips have been helpful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the red button to subscribe, and if you tap the bell icon, it will notify you when I upload new videos. I'm hoping this video can be helpful to lots of parents out there, so please share it to anyone you think might like it. It really supports my channel. And just remember, you're amazing. You're already an awesome parent, and you're here trying to be an even better one. So stop with the guilt, and appreciate everything you are, and how lucky your children are to have you. And I will see you again soon. Bye!